good afternoon everyone i dr preeti singh uh, today present to foster on role of consent in the medical practices first of all introduction consent means the voluntary agreement compliance or permission consent signifies acceptance by a person of the consequences on a often act that is being carried out to be legally valid it must be given after understanding what is given for and of the risk involved like the procedure of the operation or to be told risk foreseeable risk and the possible complications of the operation section 13 of the indian contract act says that two or more persons are said to be consent when they agree upon the same things in the same senses now type of the consent implied consent adult patient of sound mind who has the knowledge of either agree or refuse to submit to treatment and fully informed by the doctor as to what is to be done then cooperated with the physician has impliedly consented in words usually given in routine medical practices now expressed consent can be of verbal and the written we obtained before the any major operation or the medical procedures other type of consent is the blanket consent it is one where the doctor takes consent from the patient for any and every possible diagnostic or treatment procedure that might has to be taken undertaken any time in the future at the time of admission proxy consent or the surrogate consent given in case of the minors given by the parents or the guardians now informed consent informed consent means that the consent of patient for any procedure or treatment can only be taken after fully informing him about the nature of his condition it's called the fully disclosure it is the five com uh, component first of all it is the disclosure we can disclose every information about the um, procedure we uh, we are carried out now comprehension the patient understand the all the facts about the uh, procedure absence of any outside control like uh, any staff nurse doctor or anyone cannot uh, force or uh, force the patient to take the decision now competence patient is uh, fully uh, competent sound mind to take the decision now uh, and last is the actual consent it is taken in the written form about informing all the uh, facts about the uh, procedure now exceptions to the informed consent in emergency condition in emergency everything uh, is to be done in the good faith of the patient is considered to be uh, good faith is valid in the law of court therapeutic privilege in the cases of it is the exception of the full disclosure of the patient of the information in the uh, cases of neuropsychosis and uh, the patient he will not be able to tolerate the all information given to him so we can uh, use this uh, therapeutic privilege to tell the next of the kin uh, consent will be taken from the next of the kin and last is the waiving of right by the patient when uh, patient give rights to the doctor that uh, whatever you should do in the good faith is uh, good now important points about the consent under section 53 crpc consent for examination of an arrested person at a police request is not necessary a registered medical practitioner can examine such person even by using reasonable force if the examination is requested by a police officer not below the rank of a sub inspector whenever a female is to be examined under this, this section the examination shall be made only by or under the supervision of a female registered practitioner in victim of assault rape and in cases involving pregnancy abortion delivery examination of victim is necessary to gather evidence of crime however if victim doesn't give consent to examine it cannot be done paternalism it is the abuse of a medical knowledge so as to distort the doctor patient relationship consent is not a defense in cases of the criminal negligence in the case of medical legal autopsy statutory authorization is given the nature of illness of a patient should not be disclosed to any third party without the consent of the uh, patient for organ transplantation the organ of the dead person should not be remo removed without the consent of the guardians or the legal heir consent of one spouse is not necessary for an operation or treatment of other for contraceptive sterilization consent of both the husband and wife should be obtained consent given for an illegal act like the uh, illegal mtp or is not valid 
for criminal abortion is not valid for uh, immunization the government give the consent for the procedures now important sections related to consent section 87 a person above the age of 18 year can give the valid consent to suffer any harm for the risky uh, uh, risky procedures now section 88 in this the person can give valid consent to suffer any harm which result from an act not intended to, to or not known to cause in done in the good faith or for its benefits section uh, 89 is the loco parentis in place of the parents if the child is less than 12 years then parents or guardian give consent for the uh, children and if parent or guardian it not available like in the hostels then the headmaster or the teachers accompanying the children give the consent in section 90 consent given in fear or misunderstanding of the fact is not valid section 92 is the any harm which is caused to a person in good faith even without that a person if person's consent is not an offense if the circumstances are such that it is impossible for a person to signify the consent section 93 is the any communication made in good faith for the benefit of a person is not an offense now discussion informed consent can be sought and obtained in two different senses each with a different implication the first is the legal sense in which authorization for the professional to act implies that the patient has a reasonable understanding of the procedure and its consequences second and more important moral sense of informed consent is based on a true commitment to patient autonomy and the need for shared decision making now conclusion consent is must for any type of treatment or the medical procedures blanket consent has no legal value so consent should be taken for the specific treatments or the procedures consent to provide a medical pro uh, practitioner legal protection in case of an action for negligence although it is not a defense for professional neg negligence Uh, now some suggestions uh, take consent in the vernacular language and should be in own handwriting of the patient or next of the kin to avoid the legal suits as some patient said that they don't understand the language as doctor was uh, telling in the english or hindi etc consent should be clear voluntary free informed direct and procedure specific like blanket consent in the blanket consent we should not we doesn't specify about the particular procedure it uh, consent should be unique for every medical condition likewise we should take consent of, uh, for the different procedures for the different uh, different consent for the different procedures thank you